Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. We're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some nice beers from them in the past, a few different styles, but the one that we're going to have a look at today is another style that I've not tried from them yet. So I have to say I'm quite curious to see how it turns out because it's a style that I've been enjoying a lot of recently. So uh, yeah, for this this one then, we are going to head up toward Helsingborg, which is a bit to the north of me here in Lund, and we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Benchwarmers Brewing Company. So this particular beer is simply called Pilsner. It comes in at 4.2% ABV, and I think you know what style this one is. But this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoska Liga Sortiment through Systembolaget like here in Sweden for July of 2021 and the main reason I picked this one up was well one I've been enjoying a lot of nice lager beers recently and two I hadn't had one yet from Benchwarmers and it had also been a while since I had a beer from these guys as well so the stars aligned and we ended up with this one so uh, yeah fingers crossed it's a good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well certainly nice to return to these guys after a little while of course but yeah let's crack on with the review then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Benchwarmers Brewing Company before, and I will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefetch, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Benchwarmers Brewing Company then. So, Benchwarmers Brewing Company, as I've told you before, is owned by two childhood friends, Magnus Svensson and Anders Nielsen. So Magnus is an owning partner in Brewdog's operations in Sweden and he comes from a background in customer service, whereas Anders has worked various jobs but spent a long time working for an online web store. But both are childhood friends from Helsingborg and they set the company up together back in 2016. But they've got their own brewery in Rå, which is to the south of Helsingborg, and during the summer they open up as a brew pub with a grill for burgers. But uh, they apparently named the brewery Benchwarmers because they say they spend a bit too much time sitting on benches drinking the beer, as you do. But uh, recently... They opened up their tap room on uh, Helsingerskajen, which is next to the water in Helsingborg. I've been there and it's very nice. It does very good pizza, incidentally, and they've always got a good selection of bench warmers and other breweries beers, of course. And uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Reasonable prices on the pizzas as well, actually. But as of July 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 130 different kinds of beer. They do quite a few IPAs and things like that. They've been doing a few sours recently, I think, as well. But this was the first lager I'd seen them release actually uh, through Systembolag at least. I think they had a couple in their tap room and things when we were there last time but um, yeah a nice little brewery these guys and definitely nice to return to them once again having had having left a little bit of a gap between the last reviews. The last beer I had from them was a sort of milkshake IPA if I remember rightly but uh, yeah it was interesting. So um, that's all I can really tell you about Benchwarmers Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. 130 is actually quite impressive. And I think most of that has come in, uh, in recent years, actually. So, yeah, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. So just a little quick look at the artwork before we open it up. There you can see on the top of the can, there is the Benchwarmers Brewing Company symbol. You can see Pilsner there, and again, you've got the nice warm bench there. And uh, yeah, they've also got a little kind of sea tower there as well. But yeah, nicely presented beer. This one a little bit different, I think, from what we've had from Benchwarmers before. It's obviously been made up to look a little bit kind of German or Czech or whatever. But um, yeah, as I said earlier, this one comes in at 4.2% ABV. It said on the website they use Pilsner malt, which I think is obvious, and it uses Czech Sats hops. So I'm guessing that this one is done in the uh, Czech 
Pilsner style this one. So um, yeah, this should be quite interesting. 440 milliliter can, I think I paid 35 Swedish kroners for this, maybe a little bit less, but I'm pretty sure it was either 30 or 35 Swedish kroners, kroners we'll say. Um, 35 just to be safe so that's about three euros 50 just a little bit over three pounds sterling and i guess somewhere in the region of like four dollars four dollars 25 american for those of you watching over there just so you have a price comparison but yeah 4.2 percent abv this one pills the beer let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then I'm very curious to see what this has in store for us and hopefully it's as good as some of the other ones that we've had i've been enjoying the fact that the lager beers have been getting a little bit more attention again in recent times. So remember, the definition of a lager beer is a low temperature fermentation, bottom fermenting yeast. The fermentation in uh, lager beers, of course, takes place between uh, 8 to 12 degrees Celsius in ales, which, is top, which are top fermenting yeasts. It takes place between 15 and 18 degrees normally. But um, yeah, um, that's your main difference. That is your basic definition of a lager beer. So just before the head on this beer disappears, you can see that it's poured with a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. It is fading away very fast, so that's a bit difficult to see, but it is leaving a nice kind of ring around the, uh, the edge of the glass there. But um, yeah, as you would expect from a Pilsner, this one has poured a lovely kind of bright golden straw colour, this one. So yeah, looks absolutely great. Remember, the colour of your beer is determined by one, the type of malts that you use, and then that usually determines the magnitude of the colour. Then two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, and thus you um, you get a darker colour of beer. And then any adjuncts and barrel ageing will, of course, affect the colour of your beers as well. But um, yeah, that uh, those are the main factors, of course. But when it comes to a pilsner, you know, the latter two, the barrel ageing, and the um, the barrel aging and the uh, the adjuncts are not really going to play a role in that. But this one looks exactly as you would expect from a Pilsner style beer. It's got a little bit of a natural haze to it, but I think that part of that might just be the glass sweating a little bit as well, because it's very hot here in the Swedish summer. But yeah, you can see a lovely natural haze to this one. So yeah, remember the Pilsner as a style originates from the Czech city of Pilsen, known as Pilsner in German, hence the name. But uh, yeah, it was created by yeah, a Bavarian brewer who wasn't supposed to be a very nice man from what I remember, but uh, the very first Pilsner was Pilsner Urkel or Pozienski Prastroy as the uh, the Czechs call it. So yeah, definitely a beer that you should check out and one of my kind of go-tos. But uh, yeah, lovely beer style and one that I think that has been underrated for um, for quite some time. But the main difference for me between the Czech lagers and the German lagers would be the Czech ones tend to be a little bit more kind of bready and yeasty and smooth in a sense, whereas the German ones tend to be a little bit sort of crisper and drier almost. But uh, yeah, with this one having the Czech sats hops in it, I think this one should be a little bit spicy. Um, but we'll see how it turns out in terms of smoothness and stuff in the malt base. But as I said, the beer looks as you'd expect for this style. We'll take a quick look at the aroma and see how we get on with that then. Oh, that does smell very nice, actually. Really authentic. And as I've said to you in previous reviews, when I look at these styles of beer, what I'm looking for is authenticity. Like, how close are they to the Czech ones? How close are they to the German ones? And I'm going to say straight away on the aroma, very, very promising, I have to say. Um, these are not styles that you expect to kind of do anything crazy. You do expect them just... I, I prefer these styles to just be authentic, true to what you'd find in the countries that I mentioned. But yeah, the aroma of that is very, very nice actually. I think this one's going to be quite well done. And that's a measure of a good brewery. If a brewery can do a good pilsner, a good authentic pilsner, then that shows you they know what they're doing. But um, yeah, aroma from this one is really nice. So the backbone of this beer, straight away, um, you'll notice that it's very smooth. So I think this one is going to lean a little bit more towards the Czech side of things, as I suspected with the fact that it had Sats hops in it, or Jatitz, as the Czechs call it. But you get this lovely, smooth, white bready backbone to the beer. And it smells a little bit more yeasty as well, which again, I think is um, is a kind of indicator of a Czech um, Pilsen rather than a German Pilsner, if you like. But yeah, lovely kind of smooth backbone to this one. You can smell a little touch of bread crusty character in there, but you also get a wee bit of crispness from the Pilsner malt as well. So there's a lovely little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness to this one. You can smell a little bit of that sort of sweet caramelly quality in the middle, uh, right in the middle of the nose there. But you do get that kind of lighter crisper McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing coming out of this one. So um, yeah, 
I do like how that um, how that goes together in this beer. Absolutely, it's really um, it really goes about its business very nicely from the malt base. Um, you other than that, I don't think there's too much to report in terms of. Um, in terms of what's going on in the malty side of this uh, of this one, you do get, as I say, a little touch more greeniness out of it. But yeah, smooth, kind of quite fresh white bread in this one. A little bit of bread crust, um, you know, maybe one or two very slightly woody undertones to it. But then, yeah, a little bit of a very slightly sweet caramelly honey sort of thing in the middle of the nose, and then a McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of quality to it. So yeah. I think that is your malt base in this one. On the hoppy side of things then, let's take a little quick look at that. So hoppy side of things, um, hoppy side of things, the beer has a little bit of, um, on the hoppy side of things, it's got a little bit of a kind of earthy note to it, which you're always going to get from these kind of noble type hops, but you do get quite a bright um, floral aromaticity out of this one. It's got just a wee touch of spiciness to it, which as I say, is a common trait with uh, with the uh, Sats, Jatitz hops. I've always found with the noble hops, the Slovenian ones tend to be really smooth. The Czech ones tend to be a little bit spicier, whereas the German ones tend to be a wee bit more <clears throat> kind of brighter in a sense, I would say. But uh, yeah, you do notice that with this one. It's got a lovely grassiness to it as well, this beer. You can really smell a little touch of that kind of zestiness. And I think the spiciness almost comes out um, on the grassy part of this beer, which I very, very much like. So yeah, the aroma coming out of this one, I think is um, is very nice. Um, so yeah, lovely, bright, kind of slightly spicy floral aromaticity, as I said, some really nice kind of grassy elements. But um, yeah, you've also got a wee bit of a kind of fruity character coming out of this one too, which I think is interesting. And the fruits are exactly what you'd expect. It's a little bit of that sort of kind of peary kind of thing that you get a little bit of a kind of, you know, spicy apple, but there are one or two, you know, very slight sort of apricot sultana type things just uh, sitting underneath this one. And as I always say, people always ask me what I mean by sultanas. It's those kind of dry, white, uh, green grapey sort of things. So you get a little bit of that, you get a wee bit of um, a kind of you do get a little touch of apricot, although I'd say the apricot is very, very minimal, but a wee bit of an oily pear in this one, and just a tiny wee bit of apple kind of mixing in with the sort of grassy notes that you get out of this beer. But overall, the aroma of this one comes across really, uh, really nicely, and I think this is going to be a very, very authentic uh, Pilsner beer, this one. So I've got high hopes for it. Let's put the rest of it into the glass and then have a taste of it then. I'm curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. So let me just check that that's lined up so that uh, my OCD is happy. And I guess we can get cracking with this one then. So yeah, this is the Pilsner 4.2% Pilsner Lager Beer from Benchwarmers Brewing Company in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Really curious about this. The aroma is making me th expect great things. Let's get stuck in. Slanja Skull, cheers. Yeah, that is pretty well done, I have to say. That is very nice. It's actually a lot drier and a lot kind of spicier than the aroma would have you believe, but it mellows out quite nicely. That's just the first impression, of course, and you have to always be aware of that. The impact of a beer is often a good little bit different from how the beer kind of mellows out to be. But... Um, yeah, I think this one does go together very, very nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say thumbs up to um, to Ben Swarmers for this. This is quite nice. Like I say, it leans a little bit more towards the kind of drier, crisper side of things. So I do wonder if it's maybe using more of a German Pilsner malt. Because um, as I say, the, the hoppy character in this one comes across as more Czech, if you like. But the... Um, you know, the backbone of the beer, the malty side of things, really comes across as a little bit drier and German, actually. So that's kind of interesting. The beer doesn't have too much sweetness to it either, which I'm noticing as well. But in terms of, of authenticity, it is quite nice. It actually reminds me to a degree of the um, of the Ectopils from uh, OO Brewing, actually. So if you like the Ectopils, I think this is one you're going to like, although this one isn't quite as dry as I remember the Ectopils being. But yeah, it's a very nice, just crisp, easy drinker, this. So 
they've done a solid job of this. They've got another lager beer coming out next month, which I'm going to take a look at as well. So on the basis of this one, I'm quite interested to see how that beer plays out. But uh, yeah, let's try and break down the flavour for you a little bit then and just describe it a wee bit more succinctly. That's first impressions done. Hmm. So yeah, very straight shooting beer this one, but that's kind of what you want. Um, straight away across the uh, the middle of your palate, then you've got a lovely, um, you've got a lovely kind of bit of a you get a bit of a smoother white bready backbone to this. As you go further into the aftertaste, though, you can feel that it sort of dries out a wee bit, and you get that more kind of grainy, dry quality coming out of the beer, which I can really appreciate. But um, on the, um, as I say, on the sort of uh, in the middle of your palate though on top of that you can feel there is a little bit more breadiness that kind of thickens up a wee bit but yeah soft white bready backbone there a little bit of that kind of fresh fluffy kind of note to it but then as I say the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer it really dries out quite a lot on the front half of that middle third of your palate you can feel a little touch of a woody character underneath and at either end at either end of the middle uh, third of your palate you do get a um, at either end of the middle third of your palate, you do get a, um, how do you say, a sort of more, you do get a little bit of that kind of bread crusty quality, and I like how that goes together. So, yeah, it works really, really nicely. But, yeah, sitting on top of that, um, as I say, there's a nice, smooth, um, you get a little bit of a kind of, the breadiness really actually thickens up a little bit in the very middle of your palate and I like that about this one, it gives the beer almost that, it gives the beer a little bit of that almost kind of smooth creamy character that you get from Pilsner Urkel, so that's interesting. But yeah, sitting on top of that sort of smoother, slightly fluffy breadiness that you get, it's almost like a circle in the very middle of your palate that you get out of this one, you can feel that slightly fluffier white bread in there, but you can feel that just kind of thickening up a wee bit and uh, as I say, you get more of a, um, oof, how would we say that? You do get a little bit more of a kind of, um, I used to say, you get a wee bit of a kind of fluffiness uh, there. And on top of that, you get in the dead centre of your palate, you can feel a little bit of a straight up caramel in there. And then as you move further out from the centre of your palate, it gets a little bit more kind of um, McVitie's digestive biscuity like. You can feel it just going crisper and crisper and crisper the further that you go out from the centre of your palate in this one. So I really like that. I really do like that in uh, in this beer. So yeah, it goes, um, it comes together very, very nicely in this one. So yeah, the yeah the, the brown sugary notes that you get with this are very nice and they sort of just add a little bit of sweetness on top of that kind of crispness. And as I say, you get, the more you drink of this beer, slightly thicker berry notes, the nice kind of brown sugar and bis uh, the kind, nice kind of almost honey and biscuit a bit on top then underneath you get that nice kind of dry malty character out of it so um yeah i do like how this um how this beer goes about its business in that sense so yeah interesting stuff but yeah on the um on that note as we say you get a um on that note, you do get some, um, you do get, as I say, you get one or two little woody notes that come out of the beer the further you go into the aftertaste with it. But I think this beer really does smoothen out the more that you drink of it. And you get a nice balance between the smoothness on top, the dryness underneath, and the slight sweetness on top. The malt base, I think, is very well done in this one. But let's focus on the other parts of the beer now. Um, but I think that's the middle third of your palate described quite nicely now. So on top of that, well, in that uh, border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you get a little bit of a bready buildup in there, a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing. Then into the back third of your palate, you get a nice kind of smoother bready, uh, bready element out of the beer. So yeah, you can feel that and the graininess, I think, actually does get a little bit more intense the further back uh, on the palate that you go and the dryness gets bigger as well. But like I say, a wee bit of breadiness on top, then on top of that, you get a nice kind of, uh, you do get a nicer sort of um, yeasty quality out of the beer. So you can feel that more airy yeasty note on the on top of the back third of your palate. So when you start from the back of your palate, you can feel, you can feel that the, um, you can feel that the, 
the, the flavour is taller, but as you move further forward, it condenses down. Then into the middle third of your palate, you can feel the flavour pushes, you know, condenses down a little bit. And then it's just, it's nice. It's a really nice transition from the back of your palate into the middle third of your palate. So, um, yeah, it goes, it goes really nicely um, together, this beer. So, thumbs up to... Um, to bench warmers for the malt and yeasty character they've got in this. I think it's pretty much spot on. But let's focus on the hoppy side of things then. But yeah. On the back corners of the palette then, you get a nice little bit of earthiness out of this one, but as you move further forward, um, you can feel there's a little bit of a herbal quality in there. And as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palette, it's got a nice floral aromaticity to it. It's got a good bit of spiciness to it. It really builds up in terms of spiciness the further forward that you go. Uh, you know, the further forward that you go um, on this beer. So yeah, nice big sort of floral, arom floral aromatic spice to this one. Then round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more, uh, and more grassy in a sense, which I can certainly appreciate. So a lovely kind of bright, grassy floral aromaticity to this beer. But um, yeah, the zestiness that you get on the front curve of the palate, this one's quite interesting too. As I say, this beer is a lot spicier in the hoppy side of things than it gives the impression that it's going to be on the aroma. So that's a wee bit of a surprise with this one. And you get a wee bit more zestiness out of the beer on the front curve of the tongue as well. But front third of your palate then, border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a kind of bready, uh, you get a little bit of a kind of breadier build up there with a wee bit of bread crust and then the base of that front third of your palate again you feel a sort of smooth, uh, you do feel a little bit of a smooth kind of white bready kind of thing underneath that and on top of that you get the nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So I can certainly appreciate that about, um, about this beer as well so that's worth bearing in mind with this one. Um, but yeah, fruity side of things then. In the back corners, in the back of that front third of your palate, you get a little bit of a sort of concentrated citrusy element. And as you move further forward, it's got a wee bit of a kind of sultana type thing going on, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, a little bit of a, a sort of sultana type um, quality to it, as I say. And um, so by sultanas, I mean like a sort of dried white, green grapey sort of thing. You get little bits of that. But then as you move further forward, the beer becomes a bit more peary and sort of more kind of spicy, appley. And then just behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's when you get you get a little touch of an almost limey note in the kind of more spicy, grassy esters coming out of the beer. So it's kind of got everything you'd expect. And as I say, further you go into the aftertaste with this uh, beer, it does get a little bit drier. But overall, I think this one, is a very, very nicely done uh, Pilsner beer. So thumbs up to uh, Benchwarmers for this. I do like how it goes together. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff. So on the um, the mouthfeel side of things, then I think we've said everything we really need to say about the flavour of this beer. Mouthfeel wise, what can we say about it? Um, you know, it's light bodied. It's got nice smooth carbonation to it, which I, I uh, really, really like. Although I said, well, I say smooth, but it's actually got a bit of crispness to it. But at the same time, it's it's smooth, but at the same time, it's crisp, if you like. Uh, but yeah, top, you know, kind of middle of light bodied, crisp, yet still smooth carbonation. And the beer actually, it does have a wee bit of slickness and a nice kind of wetness and crispness to it. So yeah, the way this beer goes about its business, I think, is, uh, is very, very nice in my opinion. But on the, um, on the, how would you say, on um, in the malty side of things, like I was saying, this beer, it does have three layers. It's got a dry layer underneath, it's got a smooth layer in the middle, then it's got a bit of sweetness on top, so you're getting a wee bit of everything out of the malty base in this beer. I think this one is a bit more bitter. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a sort of 30, 30 maybe even 40 IBU beer. This one, it does feel a little bit more bitter, though, because of the kind of dryness that it has. Um, and on the fruity side of things, I'd say the fruits are... You know, kind of standard actually. There's just a, there's a little touch of an oily character to them, but uh, yeah, pretty standard and kind of crisp for um, pretty standard and crisp for a um, uh, I kind of as we would say pretty standard and crisp for a, a pilsner if you like. And as I say, this one stylistically, it's got more of the dryness of the German. Uh, pilsner and then a little bit more of the kind of spiciness on the hoppy side of things that you'd expect of the Czech Pilsen. Um, so yeah, 
it's kind of an interesting one. It's almost like a hybrid between the two countries, but whatever um, particular sub-style bracket you put it into, I think it's a very nicely executed beer, so it gets a thumbs up from me uh, with regardless. So, yeah, I think that is a... I think that's a good... Um, a good sort of place to round off on this review then. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from at Ben Schwarmer's Brewing Company as well. This has turned out to be a very nice lager beer, a, nice, a very nice pilsner, and I look forward to trying the next one from them. But as I say, let me know your own thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from them. Check out their social media, check out my social media, and we'll leave it there. This one was the Pilsner 4.2% ABV from Ben Schwarmer's Brewing Company in Helsingborg, uh, here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden. Until the next time, Slange just now. Slange it, skull, cheers, and make sure you check out this beer if you get the chance. Really, very, very nicely done Pilsner beer in my opinion.